What's up and welcome back to Kinda Funny's MonsterVerse in review. That's right, we are ranking all of the Godzilla and King Kong movies in Legendary's MonsterVerse. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. What's up, yeah? The big dog, Kevin Coelho. Tom Hiddleston's in this movie. Do you guys remember that shit? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, didn't know, I didn't know Brie Larson was in it. There's a whole bunch of other fuckers like, this cast is insane. The producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Yeah, I'm right there with you guys. I started this movie, I'm like, I know I've seen this movie, but I have. Yep. I could I can't believe all these people are in it. I forgot John Goodman was in this movie. I forgot mm. the bad guy from Fast and Furious 4 is in it. Wow. He's in it? Yeah. Yeah. He's the dude that uh dies, that gets pulled apart by the pterodactyl looking people. Uh oh Ray shit is. yes he is <clears throat> oh my god uh, you know what else is gonna trip you out like I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this but the guy that plays chapman i think was in a movie called rock and Rolla, and he was the lead now he's super british he's also sense because he was the guy that did Mirror. the motion capture for god or for king kong did he really yeah oh really the, like the 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 dear billy guy yeah wow that's awesome yeah he's in the episode of black mirror where the they they have eye implants <laughs> They have eye implants and they can rewind and look at replays. What and it's a really, really awful episode. Oh my God. What a They're crazy episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, Black they are. They the are. They make shit. you feel like shit, Kevin. Like, give me a happy right. episode. Yeah. Well, we like Perro. to give you happiness here at Kind of Funny because you could watch this show in review twice a week where we rank and review different film franchises. Uh, right now, we are currently doing the Godzilla MonsterVerse and Pixar in review, but those are going to be put on pause for a little bit because. Justice League Snyder Cut is upon us this week. We will be doing it in two parts. Uh, very, very exciting stuff for some of us, including Greg Miller, who's not with us here today because he uh, was busy and had to do some other things. But he stepped on another I, rock. He, he did. did step on a other rock. Foot. But <laughs> Guys, think? he's watching right now. <laughs> Can't two walk rocks. Off. That's what he's doing. <laughs> But I have uh, I have his thoughts on uh, Skull Island right, for us to to go through at the end of this hope, with his I ranking. Hope it's just his. I hope it's his actual Justice League review, but like with all the Skull Island characters so we don't get in trouble with WB. Yeah. Well, the embargo's out for WB at this point. The reviews no, are out. Know. I don't know if you saw them. They are they're interesting. I, they are uh, interesting. Andy told me IGN's score. Which no, it was, I thought was, was it Kevin? I didn't say no, yeah, it no, I didn't say anything. Oh, somebody Maybe said it was, it was definitely Andy. He's trying to like put it on <laughs> someone else now. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. but anyways like i Wait. said you can watch this on youtube.com slash kind of funny or you can watch it on roosterteeth.com if you want to listen to it search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny reviews if you want to get the show ad free you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers Danielle biologist and sven McHale did thank both of you and thank you to our sponsors better help yeah. and babble but i'll talk to you guys about that later because i want to get right into it this is Kong Skull Island with a runtime of one hour and 58 minutes. Kong has 14 minutes of screen time, uh, more screen time than the Skull Crawlers and the Skull Devil, uh, which have between four to 10 minutes of screen time. Honestly, it felt like more for both. It felt of like those. way more. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty surprised. Good use of the, the time there. Uh, released on March 10th, 2017, directed by Jordan Vote Roberts, an American film and television director. His feature directorial debut, The Kings of Summer, which is a dope movie, screened at the 2013 Sundance Sorry. Film uh, Festival. Let's just screw everything up. I'll be right back. The film also won the Narrative Feature Audience Award at the 2013 film, Dallas International <laughs> Film Festival. Uh, and then he did Kong Skull Island. And the next thing he is working on is the Metal Gear Solid movie uh, starring Oscar Isaac, which is extremely exciting. Uh, a funny thing, a fun not? fact about, about this here is director Jordan Vogt Roberts co-wrote and appeared in the honest trailers of his own movie, highlighting some of the legitimate flaws with the film, uh, such as massive, in his own words, structural problems, lack of character arcs for the most of the human cast, and the fact that there are too many human characters to begin with. Uh, so that's kind of fun, being able to pick your own shit apart. <laughs> that's cool, and I hope that he learns lessons from that, you know what I mean? I mean, it sounds like a lot of the stuff wasn't up to him. Mm. There was like a lot of studio yeah, gonna, interference, yeah, constant say, this shit is, for the run. This sounds like his first really big project, and like it's it does have studio smack written all over it. Where there's no way that he would have written this script and been like, "I need, I need ten characters, and we need to dive into that. We need to spend equal time with each one of those characters. We need and to act didn't, like I need I, to treat every character as if this is four seasons of a television show. Yeah, <laughs> we got to like, wrap up all of their arcs. <laughs> I, uh, oh, I feel like. Watching this movie, my, like, big thing was, like, I think I'm done watching these movies, like, with the amount of, like, people in, like, I need less human interactions. 
I need people more monsters. By the end of this movie is what I what I said. More monsters. And more we'll monsters. See if the next baby. movie delivers. We will see. Uh, this one had a budget of $185 million, a box office of $566.7 million, making it a big success for them, uh, and the most money so far in the MonsterVerse. The film received a Best Visual Effects nomination at the 90th Academy Awards. Uh, Nick, have you seen this movie before now? I did. Yeah, I saw it in theaters. What are your thoughts then and now? I think it's a fun popcorn movie, but I do think it suffers from what we've been talking about. I think it's got way too many characters. Um, and I think that the Kong, I mean, like to, to its credit, I think it's beautifully shot. It's got a cool, a cool style to it. Uh, and the cast is phenomenal. They're just highly underutilized. There's too many of them. And, um, but I do like all the Kong moments. I think Kong that like all that stuff worked for me and Kong versus Samuel L. Jackson. If you tell me that it's King <laughs> Kong and he's going to fight Samuel L. Jackson, I'd be like fucking day one, let's go like midnight showing of this bad boy. Um, but ultimately, like, it's just, it's exactly what we're talking about. It doesn't need to be two hours long. It doesn't need to have 10 characters in it. It really is just an excuse to watch King Kong fight some giant lizard things. And when it's doing that, it's super fun. But I don't understand why they have to make these movies so long. Andy Cortez, what do you think about Kong Skull Island? Went in with expectations on the ground, and I think that helped out my experience quite a bit. I know when the Metal Gear Solid movie has been sort of swirling around the news, people say, yeah, but that Kong Skull Island movie sucked, so I don't have high hopes for this Metal Gear movie. I had a blast with this movie. I watched this movie like at 3 in the morning going into, or like following um, um, Daylight Savings Time, and um, I thought I'd watch half now, maybe finish it. No, I just stayed the whole way. I had a lot of fun with it. I agree with all of the complaints. I think <laughs> the characters are underdeveloped and underutilized, but... Um, John C. Riley's making me laugh every other every time he's on screen. He's saying something funny. I am getting really, really awesome action sequences. I think the I think a lot of this movie, I think what Jordan Vote Roberts and whoever the DP was or whatever, what they definitely had in control of was, hey, let's let's get creative with how this action is shot. Let's try to highlight Kong in the coolest ways possible, and also the monsters or whatever. Anytime there was a fight sequence, I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And um, yeah, this movie, I was, I found it a lot more enjoyable than I ever thought I, w I would. Kevin. I think I've been pretty outspoken about not enjoying this movie just because, like, the human element is too much. There's just a lot of interactions that I don't care about. I, like, really, really want to watch the action. That being said, I really enjoy the action scenes. I think that they look really, really cool. The, the whole movie has a really good, like, color palette. Like, it's, yeah. it's vibrancies up, saturation maybe a little low. You know, like, it's a good combo the way they did it. Uh, and uh, I think that with the hue sync, like, there's certain uh, moments that look phenomenal. So, um, I don't know. I guess I liked it a little bit more than I have in the past, but I still... Um, I don't know. I, I, the, the, like, I'm in the boat of the, the people that Andy is talking about. Where, like, after I watched this, I was like, I don't know if I'd trust this director to do something big. And when they announced him for Metal Gear, I was like, I hope it, I hope it all goes well. Because balancing uh, dynam human dynamics or you know interactions is great. big for that. Greg left me his quote here. He said, I'd never seen the movie and I had so much fun with it. Great cast, fun monsters, and Kong look cool. However, that's all it was. Just fun. Two days removed from it. I haven't thought about it since I saw it. Same thing I said for Godzilla, but this was a more enjoyable time for me. So in short, it's an action movie with actors I like that I forgot about as soon as I saw it. Still had fun though, and I'm excited about the next two movies now. Much more than I was after seeing the first one. Thousand percent. Yeah. And I guess for me, it's like, I, I've never seen this movie in, in its entirety. The only time I saw it was when it was on a TV at a house I was at when it was on mute and I was just <laughs> looking at it and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And now that I know what the fuck's going on, I'm like, I actually really enjoyed this. I think that everything we're all saying is true. And the, there are too many characters and the dialogue is, it's very bad actually. Uh, like it's not even serviceable, but everything else about the movie, I think is somewhere between good and stellar like the action's fantastic i think the visuals are fun the music's fantastic as well to like match the whole uh theme of the decades and the tones and all that stuff and you know there's nick didn't love the halo jump scene in, in godzilla but i very much did specifically because i thought it looked 
hella cool. And this movie has like 10 of those moments. Like them, there didn't need to be a storm that they go through in the helicopters, but they're like, you know what? You know what? There has to be because this is fucking awesome. And like the opening of this movie, just I didn't expect it. Like I didn't expect the style of the movie. And it it constantly surprised me. And I I feel like there wasn't a single thing about this movie that I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Every time something happened, I was like, is he really about to punch this bad guy with a freaking propeller on a chain yeah yeah he's going so to and it's awesome the scene of all the helicopters around king kong he's like surrounded looking at him it's like there's some really 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 dope shit here it's like really as much as i can ask for from a king kong movie um it's just yeah the humans just, just maybe dial it back like 50 percent and really just focus on them because when you start asking questions of like why is brie larson here it starts to fall apart and that sucks because and all the, all the little the photo moments thing. All the little camera moments, like it got a little oh, way too gimmicky. Like it. that, that gimmick needed to die way early on in the movie. Did, but I, I agree with you though, Tim. Where I didn't ever feel, I never rolled my eyes, and I think that's always like a big thing. Like when we've watched movies in the past, and some characters do stuff, and I go, oh, "What are we like? What is going on? Why are we doing this?" You know, I never really felt that way, and I think it is because of the cast and the way that they act opposite each other. And then John C. Riley pops up and we're all going to die here. He shouldn't have come here. Yeah. Like I'm fucking dying of laughter. I think it's like, it was just fun to me. I had a lot of yeah, fun with it. Like, but I, I, I kind of feel like his character doesn't fit the tone of the movie. No, not at all. You but... know what I mean? Where it's like, Oh, here's this guy who's just like fucking dumb, funny the whole time. And it's like, but the movie it's like is trying to be serious. Right. I, I also feel like the acting uh, is is a like certain characters are really overacted in a way that I wasn't super fond for like Samuel Tom, Jackson, Samuel Jackson, Tom Hiddleston, it's the and best. Brie Larson. Yeah, well, Samuel Jackson's the best because it's like you know, like we just love that sort of action. But I, I I wasn't a huge fan of Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston. Like I feel like his like I'm a badass is so well. It's interesting over because. You, 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 like the first two characters we see are John Goodman and um, I forget the actor's name. The guy who plays Brooks, um, and Dr. I'm like, Dre. yeah, the guy yeah, played Doctor Dre, Dre in from... <laughs> uh, in Straight, Straight Out of Compton. Yeah. Um, there, I'm was like, oh, these, this these, movie. these. I was like, what? No. <laughs> his name in this movie, I think, is Brooks. Um, those two characters are the first ones we see, right, when we come out of the sort of like after the the beginning of with the pilots, uh, which I thought was a cool concept as well. And I'm like, oh, cool, I'm into this. These guys have to, like, piggyback on this expedition. They're going to have a military Hawkins. thing. And that's going to be um, that's going to be the whole movie. And then they get, they get into Vietnam. They're like, no, we, we're, okay, we're piggybacking on this group, this organization called Landsat. We also have a military um, escort. But we also need a tracker. And there's also a photojournalist that's tagging along, sort of like Lois Lane from Man of Steel, because she's like like forcing herself into this expedition. Why? I have no idea. Why would Samuel L. Jackson not be like, no, I'm not taking you along to this thing. This is a highly classified expedition. I digress. Just don't think much. Yeah. Each one of these <laughs> characters could have been the main, like the 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 Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson character should have been the main characters of the movie. The 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 Samuel L. Jackson, John Goodman, uh, um, Sarah Compton guy should have been the main characters of the movie. Why they're all together beyond me. Then we have the other Sarah Compton guy who's in this, who played Easy E, uh, and the guy from uh, oh, Boardwalk shit. Empire. Oh yeah, my god, I didn't he did that. play. That's yes. So funny. This movie's and cast is insane. It's <laughs> fucking insane. And those guys could have been the main characters of this movie. So you're like, why? I think do it's they the per- need to have all these people in this. I and think, it's, could to, have been I think it's to split them apart. I think the the fact that they get split apart is supposed to be the thing that makes you say, oh that's why there's these many characters. I think splitting them apart and trying to see what each other's doing. I'm not trying to excuse it because I don't think it does a fantastic job of that either, but I did kind of note that, hey, this movie is not going to wow me writing or story-wise. I do think some of it is interesting, just the idea that the stuff that John Goodman says I just love. I love the backstory to the to the plot, and I love how John Goodman's like, I brought you here for this reason. I love that moment of discovery between him, him and Samuel Jackson. Where he's like, you fucking knew what you were doing when you brought us here. Again, the writing's not great, but I, I think those revelations are really neat. But yeah, too many, a lot of characters. It's also one of those things where they talk about, like, like did you catch John Goodman's backstory? 
because if you weren't paying attention, it goes by real fast. He was on a ship that was taken down by one of the Mutos, right? And he talks about that, and he's like, I was on the Wanderer. And I'm like, wait, was that one of the ships we've already seen? I don't know, because it's so fucking confusing. Does everyone... Do, it was everyone at some point on this island or doing something? I don't know. Like, no, I think I, I think the ship that the Mudo took down is what Kong used the propeller from to kill. So how did John Goodman? I guess boy. he got saved. No, because I thought that was like out in the middle of the ocean or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't is know. Because he wasn't on this island before. Because there was that one ship. Think. Don't they? They flash to a ship that's like all torn up. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, Those, there was like was photos that, of that one or whatever. I guess that wasn't on was the that, island. You're right, but I, um, I that was like Godzilla did that well, though, right? I'll say this: my biggest, my biggest complaint know. about the movie, biggest like the most offensive thing about the movie, that Corey Hawkins and Tian Jing, their characters too clean. Like, oh my god, doesn't look like it looks like they've just their been characters. dressing up every day, brand, brand new. You know why? You know why they're too clean? Because the other thirty characters in this did all the work. The re- yeah. those two are just like, I guess we'll just hang out and just, I guess drive the boat they, we don't, they didn't give them anything helicopters to do. and they look perfectly fine hey man he wore a dope her vest, being in this movie was was a weird call i think that she's weird. probably the most egregious character in the movie because she actually does nothing and it's weird because with what you guys are saying like i totally agree but i think that it worked for the most part because every time that we were dealing with the characters and the amount of characters there are there was that level of what's going to happen no one's really safe and i like that p- characters can just die out of nowhere like when the spider was going through absolutely terrifying and what a great choice to have that shot in a forest with a bunch of trees like bamboo. branches and stuff yeah. like yeah. bamboo lines so they don't know what is the spider and what's trees like that was so cool dudes that are quote unquote main characters just getting killed left and right right and then john goodman's character just dying out of nowhere like i didn't expect that so that's one of the good things about having that many different characters where mm-hmm. it's like it, it the stakes feel a little bit higher uh and i did like them being split up because it allowed the pacing and editing of the movie to constantly be having something interesting happening this movie's not boring like that's something you can't lob as a criticism for kong skull island which i think on paper the idea of okay there's not going to be a city it's just going to be in you know on an island jungly type setting with a big monkey i'd be like I don't know how much of this I need, but I think this movie did a good job lore-wise of setting up monsters, keeping me interested. Anytime I saw a new monster, I was like, didn't expect to see this water buffalo in a fucking movie, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, and then when they meet up with John C. Riley and the local tribe, uh, the natives that live there, and of course, every monster movie is about this, that the monster that we're trying to fight is not the end-all, be-all monster. Right. And I loved finding out about that, where, what's is that wall supposed to keep out Kong? No, 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 the kong is protecting us like we're trying to keep out the other thing and they're like what is the other thing and i'm sitting here like what is the other thing like this (laughs) this is cool man like i had a blast with this movie and and it's cool that it's like oh the other thing killed all of kong's family you know it's like so kong has a vendetta this thing is trying to kill all of you guys yeah i mean tim i'll I'll back up the point right when i first saw this movie i'm like i had a huge popcorn and i i was just having a fun time eating the whole thing and watching the spectacle that this is second time watching it though you know all the characters you can do those two planes of action with fewer characters and what happens when you have those fewer characters is you spend more time with them and you start caring about them more. you get to know them better and in this one i just feel like they they shoehorned in the backstory for everyone with like one scene and one line and i just it it left me not necessarily giving giving a shit what happened to any of the any in it and then the other weird little like thing and maybe i'm the only one i'm gonna throw this out there did the island seem way too small to have to to have animals that were that big inhabiting it because i keep feeling like Kong could like walk the whole length of the island in, like three like three minutes i'm like what does he eat who what, you know like this thing this island's so he, small he that all these giant those. animals are on it does oh he, he ate yeah. that big ass fucking squid dude oh that was funny yeah but like oh, i'm cool. like is there just one squid in there because like I imagine there's got to be at least two squids, and then can they all exist in that small body of water? I don't know. I just felt like the the sense of scale of the island needed to be way, way bigger because I never got a sense of scale like you couldn't walk the whole thing in like a day. I, I, just so I don't, don't know about that. I liked how many establish. alternate shots we got of like different sides of the mountain and things where it's like I never felt like it was a small island. I I, I did think that we were only seeing small parts of it. I did. I, I, I did wonder where does what does Kong eat, and then we saw the squid thing. I was like, oh, I'm sure. There's loads of these motherfuckers all over yeah, the place. I guess, I guess I just needed the mo- – there's one shot when they fly in where you kind of see the island, but it's got a lot of, like, the fog in it, so you don't really see the edges of it. I needed the one moment where they break the tree line, and, like, like there's a great, there's a great moment in the, um, in the movie Predators 
where they break the tree line and they look and they see the foreign landscape for the first time and it's just massive. And they look up and obviously they see a different, like a couple different moons. They're like, oh shit, we're not on Earth anymore. Spoilers, great fucking movie. Um, that's what I needed in this. I needed them to like break and be like, holy shit, this island's way too big for us to take over. And like, you see Kong in the distance and he's super tiny. Um, that, that's kind of what I wanted, but. I just always assume islands are huge. Like, I've never once wondered how big Jurassic Park's island was, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just. Yeah. My scale, in my mind, islands just always, like, I, I, I don't ever think, like, something you walk around in, like, a yeah, I mean, they do mention, like, you're not going to make it there and like. Yeah, they say it takes, like, three, walk we can't three days walk there in three days. I know, but, like, to me, I just didn't feel it right. With Jurassic Park, I think they did such a better idea because they were filming at a physical location of of shooting the the island in such a way where it actually felt like it was a big, massive island with different different ecoscapes and, like, different parts and jungles and, like, the, the hotel and all that stuff. We got to see all those instances. In this, I don't think that they did quite a good job of differentiating those. And when they did, they were so starkly different that they didn't even feel like they were part of the same island. Like, uh, the I, totally, forest, I was like, this feels weird. I totally but, had the feeling that it was as big as it was because when they do get to the natives land that seems so quartered off and totally safe and how could a place that small have an area like this and then they talk about the underground which then expands on the actual scale of this and how big is it down there and mm -hmm. i don't know that just sort of uh that's uh, we're we're probably just we should move on from there. Yeah, we're splitting hairs. <laughs> By the way, I will, I will give a shout out to you and we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. But like all the all the stuff in the village I thought was cool and how they tell the history with the rocks that you don't know what that, that is. Was as the camera lines up, I was like, that's so fucking cool. That's and honestly, really like cool that is that this movie in a nutshell to me of just like so many moments that are like, that's way cooler than it needed to be. And like it kind of starts to feel weird just because it's like a bunch of just cool shots. But it works for the most part. The one, the biggest criticism I have that isn't just like, oh, there's too many characters is that not only are there too many characters, but if this movie ended with all of the characters dying and not getting out, I wouldn't have cared at all. Yeah, you don't care. Like, they're, they're just, they all feel so dispensable and replaceable uh, that I'm actually surprised they made it out. And like, so did they get out with the camera? Like with the pictures she took? Well, no, but remember that? Brie Larson says they're not going to hear it from us. Remember, and so that's yeah. so you're supposed to be like, oh, Post I guess credit, not gonna Post credit, don't, don't. It's like someone's gonna say something though, because you did go in with a bunch of people, and a bunch yeah. of people died, and then, um, well, so first off, right there, the military's gonna be like, oh, we have to go back to the island, and figure out what the hell happened to our people, and then second yeah, off, you lies. came back with a pilot from 1940s. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that guy's gonna be like, oh man, but I got a story so to tell you. The all. post credit scene though, like, does like have they have their like debrief for it where they're told about other shit. You have to imagine they get yeah, information. Yeah, my at that thing point. is the the post credit oh, scene. I obviously love because I like that it brings yeah. it and ties it into really cool. Godzilla. But I think that tonally, the post credit scene feels like it's from a totally different movie. And like the characters, like Brooks doesn't act like Brooks acted in the movie. Like he didn't do much of the movie, but it kind of seems like he's on a different side by the the end of it in the post credits. Mm. And yeah, it is just it's weird to me that like this thing happened to them and some people know, but how how's Brie Larson gonna? deal with this with tom hiddleston i'm like also we're never gonna fucking find out <laughs> like they're I not we're the gonna movies now. right i i doubt it you know godzilla vs kong i don't know but yeah we'll see anyways let's get to the plot let's get to the plotzilla nick plotzilla ladies and gentlemen kong skull island sometimes an enemy doesn't exist until you go looking for one who said that andy Exactly. You don't know any of their names because they're all generic. <laughs> uh, two pilots crash land on Skull Island, and after proving that neither of them know how to shoot a handgun, they chase each other into the forest to have a sword fight. Uh, safety tip, everyone, do not catch blades with your hands unless it's a last-ditch effort. Uh, and don't was, fight man. on Kong's turf because he shows up and starts screaming at you. And I'll, the, the, for my first thought here was I was like, okay, clearly this is a little bit of backstory for the island. But a little bit of me when I first watched this was like, I wonder if this whole movie – despite having seen the previews and knowing there's a bigger cast, it would have been so cool if the whole movie was just a remake of Enemy Mine, which starred Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett Jr. as a uh, human and an alien that were fighting each other, and they crash-landed on a planet that was like had these crazy things that killed them, and they had to become friends. And I was like, oh, that would have been super cool. And that story was really interesting. We get none of it. Uh, really cool title sequence where we see the history of America through old footage and retro graphics. <laughs> this is how I got what happens in my brain, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, we catch up. With John Goodman and uh, and uh, what is his name? What is the actor's actor name? That will just say Houston Brooke. Corey Hawkins. Corey Hawkins. Thank you. Who plays uh, Randa and Brooke? 
in Washington in 1973 to meet with Richard Jenny to pitch him on an idea of getting uh, money for an expedition to Skull Island. And if that doesn't work, Monarch is kaput. Uh, Bill tells the senator that this was the island they did all those nuke tests on. They were trying to kill something. Uh, we get a little, I think we've already seen those potentially from the last movie we watched. I don't know. I'm getting a little what? confused with everything. Real quick question. Now, I hadn't thought about this before, but I do remember them saying that. Wouldn't yeah. that mean that like the island is now ra- like irradiated? Yeah, if there had been nuclear tests. Right? Maybe if they had, they had bombs something back then. there. Yeah. So that's it's, well, Kevin, that's... it's like clean coal. It's like when Trump yeah. says clean coal, it's like clean <laughs> Burn nukes. clean. Burn Safe clean. nukes. So do yeah. you, what I'm saying is are these people not going to be in the movie because they got cancer and died? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah. Well, also, delivery. Be, the delivery from Kevin. Yeah. They got cancer and died. And died. <laughs> I mean, they'd be really old in. Yeah. Because Godzilla 2014, yeah, I think, takes place in 2014. And if that was in the 70s, if that was 1970, they'd be. Yeah, no, they'd be old. You can make I mean, too. I just I just love later on when they say, uh, when they say the Muto word, when they yeah, like spell Muto. it out. I was like, oh, that's a Muto. That's what that I mean, means. That's honestly, I think the use of Monarch as the thing that bridges I, between King yep. Kong and Godzilla is pretty fucking cool. I, I agree. I enjoy – sorry, real, real quick. Last thing. I enjoy yeah, – I was telling this to it. Nick before we started. I enjoy how subtle Monarch was in uh, Godzilla. And I like how in your face it is. And everyone's like, Monarch this, Monarch that in the first like five minutes of this movie. I like the contrast of the two. Anyways, I'm done. Uh, anyway, there's already a Landsat operation heading to the island that could piggyback on, and we can't let the Russians get there uh, or whatever to discover whatever's there first. And America's like, fuck yeah, you're right, bro. Get in there and get it done. Uh, one more thing. We're going to need Samuel L. Jackson to escort us. Yes, we are. To Didn't Vietnam. know he was in this either. Yeah, what a surprise. Dude. What a great role for him. Off to Vietnam we go, and it's the last few days of the war. Uh, Spilko, Cole, Mills, and Rellas are all t- talking shit about each other's moms while Packard is having a Budweiser. And we get the sense that he thinks the war effort, he was like, oh, man, I don't know what to do now that the war is over. I'm a gun, and I need my trigger pulled. Uh, Packard gets a call, uh, and he's like, we need you for one last outing. And he's like, thank God, because I've just been here get, drinking beer. I got nothing else to do. Brooks and Randa head to an opium den to recruit a tracker, and they find Tom Hiddleston, who was really good with a pool cue, wait, wait, uh, but he's not having – what's up? Let me just – that little conversation that, that just happened, like, it is way less subtle in the movie. Like, he literally uh, is like, what are you going to do when you get out? And the guy's like, midway saying something, he's like, I hate everything. Or like, what's even the point? It's just – this movie has those moments where it's just like, all right. Let's Someone just get them to where they need to get be. Get at the screen yeah. and like sharpie some stuff out. And just have like the <laughs> yeah, eyes uh, do all the definitely. expressing, you know? Uh, who was the actor of that guy? Of that guy? The I don't Who's give a fuck guy? soldier guy. What? Oh, no. um, yeah, the older looking dude. The guy from he, Boardwalk Empire who played his older brother. He's very familiar. I don't know if he's in Boardwalk Empire. He was the dad in the Death Note movie, the Netflix one. Yeah. But I fucking love that guy. He's been in everything. He's a great character actor. We'll look up his name. Like, Kevin I would have guessed Andrew. he was in Saving Pride Ryan because he reminds me so much of the sniper in Saving Pride Ryan. His name is Shay Wiggum. Like, I have Wiggum. the IMDb pages. The pictures are so small. <laughs> yeah, it's Shay Wiggum. Yeah. That's his name. Shay Wiggum. I like that guy. Yeah, he's a good character actor. He's always like the cop that's like, you don't know if he's good or bad, and it turns out he's good, but he gets shot. Oh, he's going to be a Mission like, oh, no. Impossible 7 and 8? Hold on. All this right. Is... He's in fucking Fast and Furious. <laughs> he is. He's one of the cops, right? He's, like one of the he's asshole the guy cops that fucks with the... Brian all the time that keeps that's getting right. his nose broken. Oh, my yeah, God. You're right. so right. What Wait, the fuck? He was so, so young. And Reyes are both in this? This is the craziest movie because like if greg miller were here describing the plot it would definitely be like okay so dr dre is hanging out with roseanne's husband and then <laughs> loki and captain marvel are there with the bad guys from fast and furious 6 oh he was in season one of true detective also he was one of the bad cops and he was one of the bad cops told you trying to spoilers come on man I haven't watched it yet. Ah, it's a good show man it's a good show i'm, I'm waiting hey, to. Got, I'm gonna forget, hey, hey hey uh everybody um big news got my armrest they sent me a new armrest. Hell yeah. That's great. Hopefully, hopefully I don't break that. it again. 
Uh, let's see. So they go over, they find Tom Hiddleston because this movie needs more characters, and they say, "We need to, we need you for this island." It's just too many mosquitoes on uncharted islands. Do I want mosquito. five times the money uh, and a bonus if we make it back. And then he says, "Men go to war in search of something, Mister Conrad. If you found it, you'd be. Or sorry, this is what John Goodman says to him. He says, "Men go to war in search of something, Mister Conrad. If you'd found it, you'd be home by now." And I'm like, I don't know if that's why men go to war. I don't think they're searching for anything. Mm-hmm. Usually they you go to war to defend their countries, and they immediately want to come home. It's true. Or I go to the know, war or zone. not be in debt. <laughs> yeah, you do. The war zone. Uh, then we get introduced to Weaver, played by Brie Larson. Again, thank God we put more characters in this. Because thank that's God. Uh, Weaver is oh, an I love Brie Larson. I will photo- forever have a crush on Brie Larson. I'm so happy she's in, she's in the You movie. just like her because she was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, Weaver is an investigative photojournalist who knows something is fishy on the island, and it's not the fish, Tim. Uh, she shows up the next day and has a brief but great scene with Samuel L. Jackson where they spar, where they, where they verbally spar. Uh, and then I was like, man, maybe these two should start a movie together set in the 90s where one of them gets superpowers. She says, you're not actually blaming the people without guns for losing the war. And then Samuel L. Jackson replies, the camera is way more dangerous than a gun, and we didn't lose the war. We abandoned it. And then he gets on the boat. Okay. <laughs> It's really cool. I was like, damn, this dude was. I thought that was blood. cool. I thought that was a cool. Yeah, movie. I also like it's like, that. Like, damn, they're fighting back and forth. Like, <laughs> they're fighting. <laughs> they're gonna and have what... tro- They're gonna have problems, and they don't really, unfortunately. No, no, they don't really. They just split them up. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have problems until the very end. Uh, then we get a mission briefing in which we get introduced to a bunch more characters. And at this point, I'm like, I, it's, there's just too many people to keep track of in this movie. Uh, the island is surrounded by a bad storm and they're going to bomb it to test its density or something. Uh, then we tell everyone there's only one way off the island at a very specific time. And if you don't make it, you'll die uh, a, a death worse than those sad sacks of shit in level five. Conrad. I did. I did like that. There was always that. Okay, we know that in three days they're going to be at this place, they, and you need to be at this extraction point. Because right. I liked it because it at least gave enough shit where I'm like, otherwise these characters are totally fucked. Well, yeah. Tim, it's true. And if you um if you didn't catch it this time, don't worry. They're going to tell you 15 more times that they have to get to that extraction point at that specific time, or else they're never getting off this island. Because God forbid the, the United States military would be like. We're just never going to go back in and find these guys. I think it had something to do with the storm front clearing. I don't know. Nick, it didn't work for me, unfortunately. I had forgotten about those poor fucks on level five. <sighs> and now I don't think I ever will. No. Keep them here. And level keep them five, here. dude. Never forget. Here. Rest in peace. Here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Conrad and Weaver, we learn, have a history together. He's ex-British intelligence, and she's an anti-war photographer. Um, and I guess they're trying to build some tension there, but it never really comes through fruition. Uh, similar to how the Brooks and, and uh, Son thing, just that he like flirts with her one time, and I'm like, dude, this, we don't need any of this in this movie. Uh, it's at this point that I realized the dude who played Easy e is in this too. And I'm like, how many other cast members from Straight Outta Compton can we include in this monster versus Tim? We'll have to wait and see. And then I thought to myself, wouldn't it be awesome if they got Paul Giamatti to play a hermit crab? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's the type of shit I want to see, like, the spinoff movie, like, the short film of, of John C. Riley of just what he's hallucinating on that fucking island. And, and his, <laughs> Paul Giamatti as a hermit crab. I'd like, to imagine, I'd like to imagine that John C. Riley was after watching several seasons of Cubs baseball was like, send me back to the island. <laughs> like, I yeah. can't do this. <laughs> Just get me back out there. Yeah. Uh, Neves wants to call a mission because of bad weather. So Randa calls in Colonel Packard, who we all know has a death wish. Hold on to your butts. We're going to see a big monkey. The gang heads over to Kong Skull Island, and it's really hard to get to because there's a giant storm they sometimes have in the Caribbean, which only surrounds one island. But does so perpetually, uh, just like when I first moved to San Francisco and it rained for 40 days straight. And I thought I made a huge mistake until I met Greg, who confirmed it. They fly into the hurricane, <laughs> and it immediately goes to shit. So Packard tells everyone the story of Icarus, which is not the story I'd want to hear if I was about to die in a helicopter crash due to lightning. But he tells it to him anyway, um, and I don't really understand it. But Samuel L. Jackson could fucking read the menu at Burger King, and I would love it. So I uh, loved they- this scene. Everything about it was just so ridiculously cool. It's pretty dumb. It's because it's Samuel L. Jackson who's like, the story of Icarus. And I'm like, ah, cool. I'll listen to this for five minutes. Yeah. They break through the storm, which doesn't seem to surround the island so much. It's just be kind of be on the one side they came at it from. Um, 
And then welcome to Jurassic Park. The island is pretty. We get lots of cool photography here. The team splits up so they can start the survey. Uh, and this movie is well shot. I put that there. Uh, they start the bombing and seismic response it is incredible, according to Brooks. The bedrock is practically hollow. And the dudes on the helicopter are really enjoying killing the local wildfire with bombs, or wildlife with bombs, until something throws a palm tree through their window. So and one of them sick. So Holy shit. Cool. Oh my God. It looks and so then rad. snatches the other right out of the sky so he can snack on the soldiers in side of the helicopter and then and throws one him. of the soldiers and then, at the other helicopter and then, and then, then we get the best the line of the movie is that a monkey <laughs> i Amazing. love everything about it. this is kaiju at its best to dude me. this sequence was so perfectly done i think and and uh again i think it's the dp and i think it's jordan vote robert saying how can we be maximum creative with all of this Max creative, and yeah. the single shot obviously like it's weird to say that because none of this is real. It's all CG. But the single shot of like looking through the helicopter as it's moving around. And then you see from like you see Kong looking at like all of this was so goddamn interesting to look at. And that's all I need these movies to be, dude. I'm I've given up on trying to get incredible backstory and amazing acting with great writing and cool twists and turns. Nah, man. Make me smile and say this is really awesome and creative and have fun. And that's exactly what this whole sequence did. I thought it was perfect. So cool. Um, go ahead. Uh, real quick, the song that was playing in the background with the was it was the name of the group the Jurassic Park it was the Ozzy Osbourne one. No, no, isn't that the something rabbits? Right? Wasn't this the Ozzy Osbourne is on the way when they're flying before they hit the hurricane? I believe. Yeah. Mm. They have a lot. I mean, they have all the standard the song, Vietnam the 70s songs. The music's fucking rad. I love it. I loved it. It's a good soundtrack, yeah. Uh, then Kong takes out like five other helicopters, and I'm thinking to myself, how many fucking helicopters were there? Because I could have swore there was only three, but there's like eight helicopters in this. When he, uh, starts, goes down. when he starts running, Nick, and he's just like sprinting in the jungle, I'm like, holy fuck. Like, you're not getting away from this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got you dead to rights. Uh, then uh, let's see, Pat... Uh, Packard locks eyes in silent rage with Kong as the ape destroys the last of the Colonel's choppers. Finally, he's found his purpose. And he kind of like smiles a little bit. He's like, yeah, it's me versus you, Kong. Let's see which one of us is going to win. Spoilers, it's Kong. Conrad first lays off, out a though, plan. First off, first off, hold on. Kong created a war crime, all right? Uh, committed a war crime, rather. Not created, committed. When the medic goes down to save that one dude. <laughs> he smashes And then he just, he just steps on both of them. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. And Insane. I do want to point out also the detail of the helicopter blade cutting his hand and him being like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, the animators did such a great job of showing Kong be like, what the fuck? Ow, shit. <laughs> like, that hurt, dude. There's also yeah. a little spurts of, co uh, of color that I feel like is just subtle, but also, like, nailed it. Like, that's what I imagine a giant monkey getting hit by the back of a helicopter looked like. Yeah. Really I did cool. like the the use of the different beasts and creatures and stuff having like different blood and different goo inside of them. Oh, like yeah. Godzilla they, having the blood and then the squid having the ink and the the blue when they blood shoot the, the bird. Yeah, when they yeah. shoot the bird and it squirts blue blood, I'm like, it needed blue blood. That was a yep. perfect choice. Totally. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Conrad lays out a plan. Hike north, pick up everyone they can find on the way, and make it to the exfil site to signal the ship by the exit window. And then Packard manages to make contact with Chapman, who is in the crash site of the Sea Stallion, uh, which has all the bombs in it. And then Packard's like, "We got that thing has enough ammunition in it to kill Kong, so we're going to come to you. Uh, Mills gives Cole shit for eating, and the two of them rendezvous with Packard and, and Rellas, I think is how you say his last name. Um, Packard finds Randa who cops to why he really brought them there. He was on a ship a long time ago and got attacked by the massive unidentified terrestrial organism, or MUTO for short, which I put it in there. He didn't say that. Uh, he tells Packard to get them home so they can call on the cavalry, to which Samuel L. Jackson replies, I am the cavalry, and then walks away. And again, I would listen to Samuel L. Jackson order Starbucks and be fucking riveted. I love this man. Is there any other actor that is just as that as Samuel L. Jackson is like he has it's not even just one line like is there any words or phrase associated with an actor more than motherfucker and Samuel L. Jackson no any uh, no not it. at all no the the idea that like the whole career was I think based off the Pulp Fiction wallet of bad motherfucker and like that's his life and that's what he embodies <laughs> so love it 
Uh, Brooks tells the team why he came to the island. He wrote a paper with a crackpot theory that the world had a bunch of underground caverns that house ancient species and stuff. Uh, and then they run into a big water buffalo, and, ha- and Tom Hiddleston whispers it. He's like, and the water buffalo goes away. Uh, Packard and the team hump up the mountain to Chapman. And yeah, I wrote that. And Cole tells Mills about a kid story <laughs> that he never really understood. And in doing so reveals a little insight into his fucked up childhood, I think. Uh, then a soldier gets a bamboo shoot through his mouth. Uh, but it's not really a bamboo shoot. It's so the leg of a giant up. spider. And Did this, this feel like, like it belonged in this movie? No. And why? I'll tell you why. Because spiders usually like when they hatch, there's like a bunch of them. And if there were that many spiders on this island with how the spiders like, like, uh, they grow fast. They grow fast. I mean, this island would be overrun with these spiders and then they would starve to death because they would. No, the the babies are the size of a human and then they grow, they grow fast. Maybe that's one of his favorite treats. He's keeping the the. Oh, you're right. Kevin. Or maybe the mutos are eating them. You know what I mean? People eat the, are these, these creatures eat these spiders. I'm not going to say they look delicious for me, but like, for big old monsters, I feel like this is uh, something to look good. It was horrifying because I didn't want the bottom of it to look the way it did, the and they made it look the way it, it did. did. And when it starts, arms, when it starts, it... when it starts sucking them up with the things and bringing Dude. them in, and then it underneath it, it has it. a whole other fucking monster it's under a crab it. Arms. <laughs> it had fucked up crap. Yeah, so, I, and I'm gonna say it right now. I'm gonna say it right now. Should have cast Paul Giamatti in that. Could have got the whole cast. Ah, oh, Jesus. Straight out of Compton, right there. Straight yep. out of Compton, yep. right there. Uh, they blow this I thing was away. Really confused by the Paul Giamatti thing till right now. <laughs> you know, that, me too. That, me too. That, I didn't realize that's of, where you yeah, pulled that it. Made a lot of stra- yeah. That, yeah. Good. Yeah. I was too afraid to ask. If I'm being honest. <laughs> now you know, guys. It's all planned and calculated. At no point did I just think of that right now. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Samuel L. Jackson shoots it in the face just like he did Brett in Pulp Fiction, and we move on. Uh, Conrad and the team run into an indigenous tribe uh, led by John C. Riley, who has a great big old bushy beard. Uh, also, he's kind of nuts, and it's fucking amazing. And the first time I watched this movie, I was with Kevin. I was like, I feel like this is really kind of out of place. But the second time I watched this movie, I was like, I don't care. He's so funny every time he does anything that I just wanted the whole movie to be about him. Uh, he's the pilot from the beginning of the movie. Uh, and then chat, we go back to Chapman, because why not? Chapman spots Kong while uh, filling his canteen in the lake uh, and watches as the beast tries to tend to his wounds in the water. Without provocation, he attacks Chapman, but he's not really attacking Chapman. He turns out Kong is just really hungry for some of that fresh calamari. Um, Man, Marlo, this whole sequence is cool shit. Yeah, I, I, I it was pretty fun. I thought it was like terrifying, obviously, for him. I thought he was going to get caught, and then seeing the ink just fucking explode out of the squid as kong is like destroying it so goddamn cool but king kong be careful okay people have died with when tentacles are going down their throats and the tentacles get stuck on their esophagus and they choke king kong's just slurping these goddamn things down like they don't have the little suction cups gotta be careful king kong i know i think it wasn't Uh, was was it yeah no huh it had 13 legs Cool. It didn't. I have no idea how many legs uh, it had. I mean, for the brief think. Googling with all the monsters, it's definitely an octopus. Oh, okay. I mean, it looks like an octopus in the pictures. There you go. Octopi. Octopus uh, Marlo brings Which Conrad and the team back. Very, very delicious. Uh, back to the team. Back to the. Wait, Kevin, what do you like? You like fried calamari or you like uh, grilled calamari best? Fried. Well, I mean, what? I'm talking about octopus, not calamari. Calamari well, is either squid. one. Yeah. I'm, how do they use I mean, the no, I'll have either. I'm, 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 I like it fried. I like it grilled. I like it. Covered in panko, I like it raw. You know what I mean? Before we move Kevin, on, oh my god, let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Babel Genesis Qua. And if you don't know, that means I don't know what, like the thing that is missing. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what it's missing, but it's missing it. And I learned that using Babel, just like Greg Miller's been doing. He's been trying to learn French uh, to be able to, you know communicate a little bit better with his wife and it's been going great uh babel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world babel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school good riddance uh babel designs their courses with practical real world conversations in mind things you'll get to use in everyday life not just trying to find where the library is ain't that right kevin Thank you very much. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. 
you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code MORNING. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code MORNING, for an extra three months free. Babbel, language for life. And next up, I want to give a shout out to Better Help. In 2021, talking about mental uh, health is finally a thing, and that's why we're excited to be sponsored by Better Help Online Theory. Mental health check-in. How are you really? And what do you need right now? Therapy can help you. What is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Get some tools to help with motivation, depression, anxiety, battling your temper, stress, dealing with insecurity in relationships or at work, whatever you need. It's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. Uh, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Uh, one of my good friends has been using this and been having a really great time just because of how easy it is uh, and how like private and secure it all is and he just feels very comfortable with the whole process. You can join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Kind of Funny Morning Show listeners. You can get 10 percent off the first month at betterhelp.com slash morning that's better h-e-l-p dot com slash morning betterhelp.com slash morning to get 10 percent off your first month of better help kevin Woo! got really into that just there he yeah, was like he covered in panko <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh yeah yeah i really so here's the Whisper thing I went, to, panko. Nick, I went to costco because it's been a while and i need to re-up on like toilet paper uh, nah. Tide, all, all the stuff that I need. And uh, I got there, and one of the, the new items that I hadn't seen before is like some octopus that's already cooked. I don't know if you know this, octopus really difficult and annoying to cook. Like, you got to do a whole bunch milk. of stuff. To, yeah, you have to put it. So it's already cooked, and I re, I'm like, I'm sitting here regretting not buying it because I could be eating it, it right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah you could. like, look, I'm be Kong. slurping it down like Kong, wearing no shirt. Maybe we'll burn some hair off your body later. It'll be a good old time. Uh, Marlo brings Conrad, Conrad and, the tri uh, and the team back to the village. Once inside the wall, he tells them that they're safe there. Uh, but the wall, they're like, oh, Kong can't get in here. He's like, you're not. He's like, Kong's not the one we're worried about. He's the protector. There's something else out there. And that's when Andy got really excited. I got really um, excited right there. Also, shout out to HBO Max. I just brought it up right now, brought up the movie. And they let you full screen in full 21.9. That's really awesome. Oh. Very they cool. don't just like they don't just like cut it off and still have the black bars up though. They let you go full screen on twenty one nine. It's awesome looking. Hell yeah. uh, also, real quick, it's definitely called the Meyer Squid. It's for sure squid. Oh, it's a squid. Bad. Yeah, my bad. Oh. Got squided. Yeah. We all got well, squid. Squid. Call squid. squid. I mean, cut it Hell off. Yeah. Buy it Fuck now. yeah, dude. I'm hungry right now. If you brought some over, I would be like, no, nah, I'm not gonna have any. And then I'd be like, I would just eat the whole thing. How big uh, do you think his beak is? It's big, right? The squid. Yeah. Oh, the size guy. of a Honda. Oh, it's probably the size of like yeah, maybe my whole body because it's those you things are sharp, Kevin. Cut you in half? They, yeah. can, they can oh, yeah. crunch oh, on yeah. anything. Oh my God, yes. Uh, also, he drops a little line here where he's like, "The people don't seem to age at all," and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then he's like, "What happened with the war? Did we win?" <laughs> And then they're like, which one? He goes, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then he yeah, walks away. That's, that was really fucking funny. Oh, uh, that makes Another, sense. Another uh, fact here I have for you is uh, the line where he's like, it sounds like a bird, but it's a fucking ant. Fucking uh, ant. The entire scene was an outtake in which John C. Riley was just trying to get the cast and crew to laugh by throwing out the most bizarre, outlandish, imaginary monster you can come up with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Vote Roberts loved it, and he thought that it really fit in with Skull Island's bizarre ecology and kept it in. In a later interview, he was saying he wanted to include the giant ant in a scene but couldn't due to budget constraints. Oh, too. That's he, you can tell that was improv, but when he's like, you got to watch out for there's things worse out there. He's like, well, he's like, ants. He's like, that's them right there. Like, it sounds like a bird, but it's an ant. <laughs> so fucking It sounds funny. like a bird, but it's an ant. <laughs> Because, you know, the sound guy had to put the bird sound effect in there after that. They had to figure out how to make that scene work. There was no, like, part in the script where he's like, and then he hears a bird sound effect for no reason. <laughs> it's so good. It's so fucking funny. The guy could do no wrong. Let's stop this right now and start watching Step Brothers. What say you? <laughs> also, the dad from Step Brothers is in this. Oh, Richard yeah. Jenny, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jenkins, Richard Jenkins, I think is his name. <laughs> Um, I yeah, love that the, also the like there's the two groups essentially the scientists and then the army people and it's like cool the army people are all in fatigues and shit and then the scientists are all these like light blue bobber jackets and it's like why why I know not only that but like one of the guys at the end uh, he's like 
It was like Samuel Jackson's like, you gonna, are you going to come with us? Or, are you going to go with them to the boat? Or are you going to come with us and like get off the porch or whatever? He's like, well, I don't want to be on the porch by myself. I'm like, you don't have any military training. You go to the boat. Go to the yeah. boat. I don't the guys that the just got out of, was the, the guys dumbest that, line. <laughs> like you're with a team of people that survived via fucking Nam. Don't go with them. You, you're not going to survive. These guys are going to outdo you every single time. Uh, let's see. Marlo takes them inside the hull of the Wanderer, a ship that washed ashore 10 years ago uh, before his, uh, which has now been converted into a sacred temple that tells the story of the people of Skull Island. Uh, Kong, it turns out, uh, is the island's protector. He keeps order on the island. Really cool way of showing it with the rocks and all that stuff. Uh, and then he says, yeah, that's Kong. He's king around here. And I was like, that's why they call him King Kong. Pretty cool. There's a god where they follow it up with like he's a god and i'm like oh they're building up this rivalry man because godzilla king of the monsters so badass oh, ho, ho. so badass uh kong it turns out is not the massive beast the bomb woke up a bunch of skull crawlers which is what he calls them and he's like and then he had this is not the greatest improv here but he's like i love it oh, that's what i, I call it love it that's the first time i've ever said it out loud so if you guys <laughs> want to call him something else I'm like no no we'll go with skull crawlers it's fine uh, he's like, there's a bunch of skull callers that come from the vents that are subterranean uh, in those substructures we were hearing about about Brooks. And one I'm of trying them to scare Marlo's you. Friend. He says. Yeah, he's like, I'm just trying to scare you. <laughs> I love the design of these things too. Like yeah. so fucking cool. Just the the two legs with the tail yeah. and the fucking the the skull with the sideways goat eyes. And it like it took me a while to realize that the the eyes weren't the black holes. Like it it took me a while to realize that the eyes were kind of located further behind uh that sort of skull looking thing really creepy cool things i was looking into an interview that uh jordan roberts was doing he was talking about the design for the skull uh what are they called skull crawlers crawler skull crawlers uh was no face from the spirited away Mm -hmm. yeah shy guys from mario yeah and cubone and i'm like god i love this and And also like the the mech looking things from uh evangelion oh yeah, yeah yeah makes sense uh let's see also that one of those things killed marlo's friend uh who was the other pilot that dropped on the on the island as well kong fights two of the small crawlers uh while they're talking and he kills them with relative ease but they're no they're only babies uh if the big ones wake up they're all screwed uh those are the ones that killed kong's family it turns out kong is not fully grown yet uh maybe he's a teenager or a little older than that but he's not as big as he's going to be apparently uh Mills so tells- facts mm-hmm. on that uh the movie features the tallest incarnation of kong in an american movie standing at approximately 104 feet tall peter jackson's kong was only 25 feet tall the tallest incarnation of kong ever uh, is the one in King Kong versus Godzilla in 1962, who was 147 feet tall. However, it's stated in this film that Kong's still growing, so he's going to be taller decades later in Godzilla versus Kong. Dope. Which is cool. Uh, let's see. Mills tells the team that Packard is more interested in killing Kong uh, than getting them off the island. Um, then we go back to Marlow, takes the team over to the Gray Fox's homemade boat, which is comprised of parts from both the P 51 that he flew and the Japanese Zero that his friend crashed in. Uh, it's not, it's their which only means named to- Gray Fox. Why, Nick? The Gray Fox. Uh, oh, I don't know. Metal Gear Solid reference. Oh, mm-hmm. that's cool. I didn't even realize that. That's cool as shit. Mm-hmm. Huh. Cool. Uh, let's see the Gray Fox. Uh, let's see, it's the only means of getting to the north of the island in three days for the exfil. Uh, Brie Larson takes the opportunity to take some pictures of the island people, but gets interrupted when she hears cry- cries of one of the giant water buffalo suffering under the weight of a downed helicopter. Um, she tries to move the helicopter, but of course, the the hull is too heavy, the fuselage is too heavy. Thankfully, Kong gives her a hand, a helping hand. Um, and this is the first of the scenes that I feel like this is always kind of a running theme with Kong, right? Like Kong and like him kind of taking uh taking interest in like the female character right and i think we're going to see some of that too like later where he like picks her up and we always have that image of like him holding her in his hand um packard and the team find a giant bloody handprint on the side of the rock face uh and cole drops some knowledge about why he carries an ak-47 he's like you know i carry this gun instead of m16 he's like i took it off an enemy who before we came here was just a farmer sometimes an enemy doesn't exist until you go looking for one and then he's like well what happens if they show up at your door he's like I still have his gun, which I'm going to drop Creepy. later. Creepy. Conrad tells Marlo about the Cold War. He's like, uh, we're in the middle of the Cold War. He's like, what's that mean? Like, they take summers off? <laughs> <laughs> that, one fucking, that one fucking got me. I was this like, whole good. Sequ- this whole sequence is great. Dude. Good job. Good job, man. Uh, and then Chapman runs into a giant stick bug, uh, which he shoots, and then he gets eaten by a skull crawler. Um, then we get another scene. What's up? 
I was no. just going to say, I, I like the stink bug. I like all the, the monsters. I like the amount yeah. that are in this, and I like the creative uses of them. I also like the shame of him getting shot, just kind of walking away like, hey, man, be cool. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> felt, like, I felt bad for him. I felt bad I also, for him. I also didn't want that to be the end of Chapman, but I yeah. think it, like, I didn't expect to feel any emotion in this moment or in this movie, but when they do the final Dear Billy, I was like, why do I care this much? <laughs> like, I, the Dear <laughs> Billy I just got it. <laughs> well, it's interesting because Chapman's sort of the first one to realize that, like, there's a human or, like, or like a, 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 you know, a sensitive aspect to Kong. Like, he's not just this wild beast. Like, he's actually a very evolved, like, has feelings and potentially like they judged him wrong. And so I thought when I first watched this, that Chapman was going to be the one to like have to like square off against Samuel L. Jackson's character. But like, Hey, this thing's not bad. We just came into its house and started knocking on its door. Um, but instead he gets eaten by a skull crawler uh, who conveniently also eats his um, dog tags and uh, bars up the skull layer with a dog, dog tag still in it. That's, that's very lazy writing. Uh, Conrad tells Brie Larson, about his dad disappearing in the war, which is why he became a tracker. And they look at the Aurora Borealis, and Randa tries to talk Packard out of going to a crash site. And he says, this is beyond us. And he's like, no, bro, you started this thing. You knew where we were fucking going. Just like the first time I got really, really high uh, because my brother's friend, Hoel, smoked me out. And I said, oh, well. I don't think I should smoke anymore. And he said, you knew what you were doing before you got, you knew how you got, what you got yourself into. That's exactly what I think they were channeling for this scene. Really? Um, Mar- wow. Yeah, yeah. First, I was high, for, I was high for a day and a half. I woke up the next day and I was still high. My mom's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I think I'm sick. I'm just going to stare at this wall and eat a lot of fucking Cheetos. <laughs> Did, uh, but we, we already passed the whole, like, that whole sequence of the uh, the whole, like, Cold War moment, right, that yeah. we just referenced earlier. Because yeah. then <laughs> the other joke where, he, where he's like, hey, we send a man to the moon. And he's like, really? What do they do? Leave him up there? Yeah. What, what are they What's feeding him? <laughs> <laughs> Tang, <that's eaten>. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Just like anything John C. Riley says, just always gets me. What well, they do? Leave him up there. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Uh, let's see. Marlo says goodbye to his fallen friend. Uh, it's actually kind of endearing. They fire up the gray fox to get off the island. Uh, before leaving, of course, he tells the people of the island goodbye, and they bow slightly to him. And then he says, "Well, if you're ever in Chicago, look me up, I guess." And then they take oh, off. Oh, uh, so sad. I know. And Brooke uh, flirts with Son a little bit here. And we get another scene where Marlo tells um, them about his kid. But when Mills calls uh, and they, he- uh, excuse me. So, okay. Yeah. Mills calls over the radio and they heed the rendezvous and they go to the rendezvous point. Uh, but Neves gets eaten by some pterodactyls, apparently. So his character is just gone. I'm I love like, why that. do we have like, his character just, and the other character? Yeah. I don't know. That, I've, that just feels like such a how do we write out these people that don't need to be here this late in the movie? <laughs> yeah. That's one of them. Uh, they catch up with Packard, who is, who wants to go west to find Chapman, but Marlo tells him that he's crazy because uh, that's where the skull crushers or crawlers crushers I don't know skull crawlers uh, crawlers live. So they uh, but instead of uh, arguing with him, they go anyway because Tracker has got a track. Uh, I do love this part too because he's like, <laughs> I didn't write it down, but it says something like that. He's like, we got a we got a saying on this island: uh, south south is bad, north is good, or whatever it is. <laughs> southwest, southwest mm, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> It's so stupid. It is but so it, stupid. But it I, I like it though. I, I mean, I think it fits his character just based on like him being alone on this He's island. Just zany as fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I buy that enough as a premise to allow him to act this way. And I think that it's this type of humor that is still grounded in the world that I think we don't get a lot from these type of kaiju movies. And I wish we did because mm-hmm. I think Godzilla, the last movie, could have used this, but. Got it here. Very true. Uh, they come across the remains of Kong's parents, but Packard insists they push on. Cole lights a cigarette and tosses it under a pile of fumes that blows up, which draws the attention of a group of skull crawlers. So they hide. Not very well. Thankfully, one of them coughs up Chapman's skull Ugh. and dog tags. So Conrad and Weaver know he's dead. Uh, Randa gets eaten. So they set up a 50 cal on a triceratops skull and watch. I think this seems like very, very Dude, cool. They watch so as bad. the flash bulbs going off. Like revealing sort of where he is, but only for like the moment that it goes off. I'm like that's that's actually pretty fucking. It's cool. a perfect sort of little element to make this scene what it is because I I didn't know what they were gonna do. I thought it was just gonna be this flash is gonna draw them towards him, and that's all they're gonna utilize this mm-hmm. sort of this you know I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is right now, but the idea that it then gets digested and that's going to then lead into. Where is this thing coming from? I think it's so badass, especially with how foggy and uh, just creepy this whole area is. Also, when they're in this area, I'd be like, dude, maybe don't breathe. Like, this doesn't feel safe to breathe in. Yeah. (laughs) This is dangerous, (laughs) for sure. 
for sure. Um, let's see. They attacks. They get attacked by this thing, and they get quickly overwhelmed. Spilko gets knocked out and drops some green gas cans all over the place. So Tom Hiddleston <laughs> borrows John C. Riley's samurai sword to hack through the pterodactyls to give, uh, and then to give him. Uh, let's see. Well, he's uh, John C. Riley also slashes the motherfucker down the Achilles tendon, pretty much. Right. Uh, to save him, while Brie Larson uses his father's lighter to ignite more fumes to blow up the skull crawler. That's John something Sekiro that happened. Riley. Ooh, that was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Conrad tells Packard that Chapman is dead, but he doesn't care. He wants to kill Kong. That's what he's really all about. Marlo tells him it's a bad idea. He's like, you kill Kong, those skull crawlers will take over, and that's going to upset the ecosystem. He's the only one stopping it and keeping everything at bay. Uh, but then, yeah, let's see. Uh, then John C. Riley tells him to watch out for ants because it's hilarious. <laughs> That's the part. Sorry. Marlo tells Conrad they need to stop Packard, uh, but they decide to split up instead. Then John C. Riley has the great line about ants. He's like, there's one. It sounds like a burr, but it's a fucking ant. <laughs> <laughs> and then Packard and the team reach the sea stallion and prep a trap for Kong. Meanwhile, Conrad and Weaver hang out with Kong. Uh, Kong, this is a great uh, scene where he just kind of walks up to him and then uh, Weaver touches him for the first time and they realize they got to save this thing. Uh, they spot the trap off in the distance and tell everyone else to head to the boat. And they're going to go save King Kong. Uh, Packard lights Kong on fire and the squad watches in horror at what they've done. But Packard kind of gets it. He's like, I'm getting this is turning me on uh, until Kong actually is not dead and starts throwing napalm flavored water at them uh, before passing out. Packard finally getting the upper hand orders his men to place their charges, but Conrad Weaver and Marlo interrupt him uh, and turn Svilko against them. Uh, things look like they're going to go okay until the, one of the big skull callers finally shows up and everyone runs away. Uh, Packard still tries to kill Kong, so Kong is like, you know what, I've had enough of this shit, and just smashes him in the ground with his giant paw. Um, and Cutting then he him the, off. Saying yeah. motherfucker. It's just the best. Like, the absolute best. How did we get two different movies? That Sam Hill Jackson dies like in the middle of saying motherfucker. We're right, blessed, we yeah, everyone. Yeah. Infinity War. <laughs> right. Right. It's also very uh, similar Pac- to his death in uh, the blue. Deep, Deep blue, blue sea. sea. Deep blue sea. Yeah. Not going to let these motherfucking sharks. Oh, that no, was sticks on a plane. Yeah. But anyway, you guys get that. Guys- <laughs> God bless him. I just, it was just close to that, race. though. It was close to it that. It was. He's saying, we're like, I have these sharks win. And the thing came out, you know, I was like, did they just kill Samuel L. Jackson, the yeah, biggest star in this movie, <laughs> off in the first 20 minutes of the movie? It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, Kong and the Skull Crawler start getting it on. Uh, and then Cole sacrifices himself for the team, but fails absolutely miserably. Uh, and then just gets punted into a rock face and blows up. As Weaver climbs a mountain. Man, to it was like a minute. It was the what? perfect play, though. It was the perfect play, dude. It was this guy work. was going to say, eat me, and I'm going to explode in your fucking stomach. And this thing, the skull crawler, knew big brain in this big skull. And it knew, nah, I know what you're trying to do. Let me tail whip you into oblivion. Tail whip into damn. oblivion is the best way to fucking put it, Andy. Thank you for that. Sure. I love this. Again, I think this movie has like three or four moments that I just straight up did not see coming and made me go like, what the fuck? And the spider leg thing was one of them. And that this, was one of them. John Goodman dying was one of them for sure. And this was one where I'm like, oh, the plan didn't work. He's going to do the epic hero sacrifice. Nope. I, I mean, it was it would have been a great sacrifice because it's him just saying, I'm done fighting. I'm tired of, yeah. you know, I've 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 fought all I've wanted to. And now let's end it or whatever. And it's oh, just so sad. Agreed. Uh, let's see. Then Kong comes back for round two with the skull crawler and beats its ass with a tree, but gets thrown into an old ship and entangled in its anchor. Brooks comes in with the gray fox to open its fire to buy Kong some time while Weaver uh, shoots it with a flare uh, as the screenwriter struggles to give the humans something compelling to do while Kong frees himself and then skewers the skull crawler like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat with a chain uh, attached to the propeller. So uh, cool. Kong saves Weaver from drowning Amazing. and then jams his hand down the skull crawler's throat, ripping his stomach out through its mouth, uh, and then walks away like a motherfucking G as Weaver and Conrad watch. So uh, he was, wait, so he was holding Brie Larson the whole time while doing that with the same hand? I didn't quite grasp that, but I think yes, unfortunately yeah, he that's, was. That's so Brie Larson thought. was in his hand and he was just kind of using the rest of his fingers to like, let me grab those intestines, let me grab these guts. That's Let me works. beat up them guts. Because, like, Ew. I, I was really God confused. <laughs> that's not what that means. <laughs> I, I, was, I was confused by that sequence or whatever, but it was visually cool as hell. But then I f- kind of forgot, oh, you had, wait, your hand wasn't just free to grab guts? 
You you still had Brie Larson in your hand because I'm pretty sure it was the right hand, right? I think so, yeah. And that's what I thought it was too. I had that same question when we yeah. came out of it. I'll just put so, it that way. Anyway. Uh, the remaining team members make their way up the river as they com- contemplate what will happen to the island when word gets out. But Weaver is like, hey, snitches get fucking stitches. None of us are telling anyone about this, especially you, crazy fucking 1940s pilot. Don't say a word. And for sure, do not go visit your uh, your wife and your son. That's going to be super awkward. They spot but, a group of helicopters coming from the quick. south as Kong. What's up? It wasn't the whole purpose of them getting the uh, funding to do this or like getting the rights to do this because they wanted to get there before the Russians satellite flew by. Mm-hmm. So they didn't tell mm-hmm. anyone was on the island. Wouldn't that mean the like the Russia? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've also told the United States military you're going there and how ha- and like 80 percent of the men died. So the military is not going to be like, we need to send more people. You can explain They're gonna that. Send more I just people mean like, you know, what? the helicopters just went down. You know, they just all they just nine crashed. of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the hurricane, hurricane. Yeah, lightning. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah, what'd you guys find there? Nothing. Do we need to go back there? Are the Russians going to find something there? Cool. Nah, that's cool. Maybe. Just, <laughs> just birds. Just found birds. A couple birds, maybe some new fauna. Uh, let's see. They spot a group of helicopters coming from the south as Kong beats his chest and roars mightily, uh, and then we get treated to a nice little eight millimeter home movie of Marlo reuniting with his wife and son, and he finally gets to have his beer and hot dog, uh, and everything is fine until her new husband comes home. Yep. The end. Exactly what I was thinking. The end. <laughs> and then, then we get the little post credit scene where we get Which, to see... I didn't watch, unfortunately. So, Tim, what happens in the post credit scene? Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know there was one. Yeah, I mean, essentially, uh, there, there's it sets up the MonsterVerse proper. Um, mm-hmm. It's Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston uh, getting brought into Monarch uh, and... We got a uh, Corey, the Dr. Dre dude, mm-hmm. kind of explaining like, "Hey, there's more of these things." Okay, and, you know we got. And they we show need, old- we need to talk to you guys. We need to know more about whatever. And we see Mothra and Rodan, and uh, the final shot is uh, King Ghidorah and Godzilla, like facing off against each other. Oh, cool. which we'll see next week or in a cool in a yeah, really neat week. In Godzilla, yeah, it's King like it's uh, I think it's like um, cave like caveman drawing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like hieroglyphic looking yeah. things. Um, but then, Nick, I, I think you'll appreciate because I certainly appreciated it. It was the sequence is sort of introduced as similar to how Marvel sometimes likes to fuck with their fans, yeah. where you hear Tom Hiddleston, he's like, You're still sitting there in the dark. What are you doing? What are you wasting your time for? And like the screen's just black while he's talking to you. And you think, Oh, they're just fucking with me, the viewer. But then it pops up, and he's talking to a a one way window mirror, or window, what is it? Yeah, mirror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's like talking to them, like, "What are you doing sitting in the dark?" And it's like, "Oh, that's clever." I thought that's he cool. was gonna pull a fast one on us as the viewer to be like, "Go home." There's no post credit scene. Turns yeah, out it was. And it's really yeah, cool. I I think that the post credit scene doesn't fit the vibe or tone of the movie and the character has some inconsistencies. But besides that, it's an excellent post credit scene for setting up a universe where that ends, and I'm like, I'm fucking hyped. Let's go. Because King of the Monsters is going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be very, very cool. Um, let's do a little bit of haiku and review. All right, here we go. Let me just get it ready. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. One of my favorite things we do. Was there audio? Please tell me there was audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it sounded sounded great. Cool. It was fantastic. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like the homie Ignacio Rojas did. Mm -mm. Kong shows he's the king. Big MCU reunion. What a great soundtrack. And miscellaneous, of course, coming in with the plot in haiku. Goodman confronting his research. He needs funding for monster hunting. Oh. They fight with the beast, leaving too many deceased, true monsters unleashed. Though this creature's strong for this world, it has not long. Don't fuck with King Kong. Wow. Miscellaneous. Really Damn. Too good with the haiku game. That was good. That was yes. good. Uh, now it is time to do a little kaiju in review. Do 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 do. Kaiju. Kaiju. <laughs> do, 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 do. In Back. review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up everybody welcome to uh kaiju in review what did we do last week did we just talk Mutos. about the mutos they're number one right 
on mm-hmm. list right now. So where do we want to put the skull crawlers? Are they cooler or worse? I, I than feel like the they're pretty much like very similar to Mutos, but less cool. Now I'll I say think- this though. They're not the only antagonists to this movie. Yeah. So I know we're doing kaijus in review, but I'm going to say this. There is a person in this movie that's bigger than Kong, bigger than Godzilla, and larger than life. And that man's name is Samuel L. Jackson, and he's the bad right. guy. So You're I'm going right to say, I'm going to throw out there for everyone's peer review uh, that we're going to go with the Skull Crawlers slash Samuel L. Jackson. I, and it's, I, go, Andy. I was going to say, honestly, remove Samuel Jackson. I think the Skull Crawlers are much cooler than the Mutos. I love the design of the Mutos, but a lot of those fights felt like kaiju fights. They felt like the slow, big moving thing, chucking a thing and grabbing on and punching and flying. And um, it felt like big creatures fighting, but I loved the smaller ones get introduced. The bigger one comes on and suddenly it's the size of King Kong and King Kong's trying to do the, the Peter Jackson callback of pulling the mouth apart and breaking the Tyrannosaurus's mouth. And it just doesn't work. And I think that whole fight is so visceral and intense that fight alone i think is like this put it puts it at number one for me i easily think that the bad guys in this are above last week's but specifically it's weird for me because i'm with you andy with skull crushers or skull crawlers are way cooler than the budos but samuel jackson it, it's such an amazing pro and con for me where i love him he's samuel jackson his dumb one-liners and all uh, i'm a bad guy doing bad things love that shit but it does come to a point where I'm just like, what the hell is your plan in this? Yeah, Why are you trying to fight you King doing? Kong? Like, yeah. this doesn't make sense at all. So yeah. it's like that brings it down a little bit. But I still think that overall, like, man, this the action in this one is fantastic through and through. And that's because of the skull crawler. So I, I put him in number one. I agree. Number one, skull crawlers and Samuel L. Jackson from King Skull Kong Skull Island. Number two, the Mutos from Godzilla 2014. We'll see where who was the bad guy in the next one no future spoilers that was a test you all failed oh shit i mean we already mentioned it but whatever that was a test you all failed and now it is time to rank the monster verse right now number one godzilla 2014 where do we want to put kong skull island greg miller has it at number one andy cortez where would you put number kong, one island? for me as well i agree I, I think this movie is just so much more enjoyable um despite a lot of its flaws i think it's it's just more fun, and it's more of an action-adventure movie. It's more of a popcorn flick, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, i put it number one. Kev? Uh, I would agree. I, I'm not a huge fan of either of these movies so far, and I feel like the, the, the problems with the first one were... Not problems, but, you know, like the everything being connected, it all being like a big family affair thing, bugged me a lot more than anything. And at least this was visually pretty cool, consistently. Yeah, I also, I put this at number one, and I think that the biggest reason for that is I think Jordan Vote roberts style feels like a restrained Michael Bay meets a restrained Edgar Wright, and that yeah. kind of works for me. Um, like, we spent the whole entire time saying there's a lot of issues with writing and just too many characters, but at the end of the day, the thing I'm looking for most from these movies is action and cool fight scenes between giant monsters, and this delivers that in spades, and Godzilla 2014 had the one action scene at the end, and him, you know, pulling the, killing one of them, ripping him apart and fucking doing the atomic breath was awesome. But I think this movie has like six or seven action scenes. They're well paced throughout the entire movie and they're all good. They're all interesting. Like the helicopter fights are interesting. The storm's interesting. The, the first opening of the movie of John C. Riley's character with the other dude, the crash landing and them sword fighting and all that stuff. All the Kong fights. I'm like, these are fucking really rad. The napalm thing. It's like every single action scene had couple layers of wouldn't it be cool if we added this okay what about that what about that and it's like always goes that extra distance so i give it my number one as well so the rankings stand number one kong skull island and number two godzilla 2014 we'll return next week with godzilla king of the monsters and then the week after that with godzilla versus kong uh remember stay tuned if you want to watch our justice league snyder cut in review it'll be a two-parter on this podcast feed or on youtube.com slash kind of funny. But until then, is that a monkey?